In the last video, we looked at solving basic quadratic equations. An example might be x squared is equal to 36. To solve this equation, we simply took the square root of both sides of the equation. That gave us that x was equal to plus or minus the square root of 36, and we had x is equal to plus or minus 6. So that gave us our two solutions, plus or minus 6. Another example might be 2x squared minus 1 is equal to 70. I would add 1 to both sides of the equation. That would give me that 2x squared is equal to 18. I would divide both sides of the equation by 2. That would give me x squared is equal to 9. We would take the square root of both sides of the equation. That would give me that x was equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. We could see that that would give us x is equal to plus or minus 3. So that now gives us our two solutions. We're now going to move on and look at some more challenging examples. All quadratic equations can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Now in this particular case, a can't be equal to 0 as it would just end up being now bx plus c, which is what we call a linear equation. So let's look at an example of this. 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. That's a quadratic equation. Remember, with the quadratic, the highest power of x is x squared. So in this case, a would be equal to 2, b would be equal to minus or negative 3, and c would be equal to positive 1. In this particular video, we're going to look at a certain case when c is equal to 0. So in the video, we're going to solve quadratic equations in the form ax squared plus bx equal to 0. So let's take an example now. What I'm going to start with is x squared plus 2x is equal to 0. So we don't have what we call a constant. A constant is just a number, so it doesn't have an x. In your study so far, you will have been asked to factor a, an expression like this. So if we factor x squared plus 2x, we can write this as x, x plus 2. So all I've done is taken the highest common factor of the x's, I've taken it outside the brackets, and we can say that this is x, and then x plus 2. If we consider now that the multiple of these two is equal to 0, if I have two numbers, let's just say a and b, if a times by b is equal to 0, either a must be equal to 0, b must be equal to 0, or they both must be equal to 0. So for example, if we did 5 times by 0, that's going to give us 0. If I did 0 times by 2, that's going to give us 0. If I did 0 times by 0, that's going to give us 0. So if this is the case, at least one of these is going to be equal to 0. And that's how we go ahead and solve. So when we have a quadratic like this, we set one side equal to 0 and we factor the other side. So what this is going to tell me now is that either x is equal to 0 or, and I'll just do that there, x plus 2 is equal to 0. And if I subtract now the 2 from both sides, x is equal to minus 2. So we end up now with two solutions. x is going to be equal to 0 or x is going to be equal to minus 2. So all I've done is gone ahead and factored that equation. So if we had x squared minus 4x was equal to 0, we can factor this. We can write this as x. Then we'll have x minus 4 is equal to 0. We always want this right-hand side to be equal to 0. If it's equal to 0, it tells me now that either x is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0, which would give me now that x is equal to 4. I'm simply solving here for x. If you want to look at it the other way around, if we have a minus in here, your answer is going to be positive this number. If we have a positive, your answer is going to be negative. So let's look at another. Let's say we've got this time 3x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. We can factor out the x, so we can write x. Then I'm going to have 
x plus 4 is equal to 0. So we can see either x will be equal to 0 or we're going to have 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. All we need to do here is find the value of x. So I'm going to subtract the 4 from both sides and then divide by the 3. So x is equal to minus 4 thirds. So x is equal to 0 or x is going to be equal to minus 4 thirds. So all we would do is simply divide this quantity by this one and change the sign. So that's a nice example. Let's say we've got now 5x squared is equal to x. A common error here with students is that they divide both sides by x. If you did that, you'd have 5x is equal to 1, and that would give us that x is equal to 1 over 5. It's important that you don't divide both sides of the equation by this unknown. What I'm going to do is subtract the x from both sides. So 5x squared minus x is equal to 0. We now have the right-hand side of the equation equal to 0, and we can factor the left-hand side. So x is the common factor, and that leaves me 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we can see from here that x would be equal to 0, or we've got 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. Adding 1 to both sides, 5x is equal to 1, and then we're going to divide both sides by 5, x is equal to 1 fifth. And we can see that was one of the solutions we've got, but we lost this potential solution of x is equal to 0. So if we're solving a problem in context and we lose that solution, that could be quite catastrophic for us. So don't go ahead and do that. And of course, if you want to think, well, I'm not going to go through this, it's simply this number divided by this one and the signs changed. OK, let's do another one. We will go for another one. Let's say we've got now 9x squared is equal to minus 3x. I want this side to be equal to naught, so I'm going to add now the 3x to both sides. So I've got 9x squared plus 3x is equal to 0. So we now have the right-hand side of the equation set to naught, and we can factor this quadratic expression. This time, the highest common factor is 3x. That's going to leave me now 3x plus 1, and that will be equal to 0. So we can see either 3x is equal to naught, which would mean that x was equal to naught, or we've got 3x plus 1 is equal to naught, which means that x would be equal to minus 1 third. So this time I've not written it out, and you wouldn't be expected to do so in an exam. So all I've done is factored it. If 3x is equal to naught, x is equal to naught. If 3x plus 1 is equal to naught, then x is equal to minus 1 third. If you wanted to graph this, for example, now let's go ahead and graph this. In fact, I'll do a slightly uh, less challenging one just to uh, get the ball rolling. If we looked at this particular equation here and we wanted to graph it, we would have now a solution to the equation. Remember, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. We'd have one at 0, 0, and we'd have one at negative 2, comma 0. So our parabola would look something like so. So the parabola is the quadratic graph, and it would come through here, and it would come through here. So these are the solutions. So there we go. Nice and logical. All we're doing is factoring them. Let's finish with one more. Let's say we have minus 4x squared plus 2x is equal to 0. I could factor the negative. Alternatively, I could add 4x squared to both sides and subtract 2x from both sides. That would mean now that the left-hand side is equal to 0. I've got 4x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. We can factor this. 2x is the highest common factor. That would give me now 2x minus 1. So if 2x is equal to 0, that would give us that x is equal to 0. If 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, then x would be equal to positive 1 half. And that would give us now our two 
possible solutions for X. Again, if this was in context, you would check them and go ahead from there and make sure that each of these solutions is valid for the problem you have. So for example, now this one with a negative, if for example it was time, x was time for example, we couldn't have negative a third as negative time doesn't really exist in the problems. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a quadratic equation. So we've got x squared and an x term. There's no constant. So an example of one where there's a constant, x squared minus x plus 3, that is the constant. In this case, we've not got them. And this is how we can deal with them, or at least one of the ways that we could deal with them. 